Uh, my name is David Charney, and I wanted to show you guys the uh, walking parallax man that I, uh, I had put together for one of the Articulate e-learning challenges. So let me replay this, and I'll, I'll do a quick walkthrough. Uh, so this guy walks uh, kind of onto the stage from the, uh, from the side there, stops here in the middle, uh, some pop-ups occur, but then you can click and drag, and as you click and drag, uh, he walks through this scene. Uh, as he walks through the scene, you'll see that these foreground elements move faster than the background elements, creating the <clears throat> that parallax. Uh, as he hits these kind of hot spots, uh, additional information comes down, and you can click, and you know you could break out of there and get some additional information. Uh, and then there's uh, when he gets to the end. Uh, there's some changes that occur in the uh, state of the guy, um, but that's basically uh, that's basically it. He can walk forward and backwards. Uh, so let's jump back and talk about how this was put together. So I think there's kind of two main elements. One is the parallax movement of the background and foreground. The second element is the guy in the middle and how, uh, how his walk cycle works. I've taken the background and the foreground graphics, uh, which are actually slider bars, uh, and I've pasted them in this new slide. I've scaled them down so you can see that they are actually just sliders. Uh, let me create a new slider so you can see the, the pieces here. What's cool is you can assign a graphic to this bar. So if I go to Format, Thumb Fill, you can select Picture, and you can assign a picture to this bar here. Uh, and that's more or less what these are. Uh, whenever you create a new slider, it creates a new variable. So I'm up to slider 7. Well, this is slider 5, and this is also slider 5. Let me play this again. So uh, this one won't move because I didn't assign the same variable, but if I move this one back and forth, you'll see that that background, or actually the foreground, if I move the background, the foreground moves as well. Now generally, generally in this project, you're moving the foreground, and the background will move, move as well. So again, because uh, the background and the foreground slider use the same variable, uh, if I move one, it will move the other. And because the track is longer for the foreground, it has to move further, uh, which means it has to move faster, uh, which uh, creates that parallax, which means objects closer to you uh, will move faster than objects further. Uh, so, you know, if you're on a long trip and uh, you look out the your side window, um, hopefully you're a passenger, I guess, and um, you're just watching the, the distance, you might see some, you know, big field and some mountains in the background. Well, those are going to move slower than the signs, which are much closer to you, which are just flying by. And that's that parallax uh, effect. So this is a JPEG that I assigned to the background and a ping, which I assigned to the foreground so that it's uh, transparent. Uh, I also slightly blurred, if I zoom in here, I slightly blurred the foreground to create a little bit more depth, to create a little bit more focus on the, the guy in the background. So back in the actual scene here, we'll talk about how the guy moves. Let's uh, select him, and this seems to be rectangle 2. I don't remember what that is. I'm sure it's there for a reason. Oh, I know what that is. Uh, when the guy walks into the scene here, I don't want you to be able to click and drag, so I create a kind of a dummy object so you can't uh, interact with those sliders. So that ends at 3, so I bet when he walks in, that's 3 seconds. And it is, so this, uh, this walk cycle GIF, uh, and I'll say GIF 2 to make everyone happy, um, that I'll turn off, and what you're left with is the guy here. This is the actual uh, object that, uh, that creates that kind of walking movement as you click and drag. If I look at the states for that, so the first is uh, just normal. He's just standing straight, no movement. One is walking, that's a, a GIF that I created of a, a walk cycle. Uh, one is uh, him walking backwards, so it's the same as walking forward, it's just flipped horizontal. And one is bare, and that's basically when you get to the very end, I just wanted a different sort of graphic for the guy 
one to show he was mauled to death and the second to show that you can change that out if uh, you're in certain situations. I wanted to make sure that worked. I want to show the walk cycle real quick. Uh, this is walk cycle 01. I've got just a number of graphics here. There's 02, 03, 04, 05. And this is a graphic. I don't even remember what this is from. I had, I've had it for 10 years. Uh, I had cut it out. And I think I colored, I might have colored the back arm and leg. Uh, but if I just click through this, you'll see him walk. And the faster I click through it, the more it looks like he's walking. And that's how you create that effect. I went into Photoshop and opened up the Animate uh, pop-up and um, and created that. And I set the, the, the GIF to be a, a looping GIF at, uh, I don't remember how many frames per second, but whatever it was, it worked. I output that um, into a GIF file that I import into Storyline. Making him walk is pretty simple. Um, he is, when he starts, he's at this kind of normal stage. He's just standing, so he's at the first state. Here are my triggers. So when I start moving the background, uh, so when I click and drag on the slider, it's going to change the variable. I might be uh, at 3. And in fact, I can kind of, let me show this real quick because I think it helps explain it. If I can find it here. I have a text box which tells me what that slider variable is. And I use this number to problem solve a lot of things. Uh, well, to, to one problem solve and B, know when he was going to be over these hot spots. So I know that I can create a trigger that says when I'm on 48, if, if the variable is 48, show this layer. If the variable is 35, show this layer, and so forth. Um, but you can see that um, as I click and drag, it changes that 30, 29, 28, 27. So basically change the state to walking when slider 1, which is the variable uh, assigned to the sliders, changes, whatever it changes to. Um, and I've got a couple little additions here uh, for walking forwards and backwards. Um, when So I do a little simple math. Uh, when, when the slider moves in a positive direction, so I keep track of what it was. So if it was three and I move it and now it's four, it multi or, sorry, it adds that up real quick and says, uh, okay, well that's a positive one. Um, if I move the other direction, it's a negative one. So I know that if it's a positive one, I should show him walking. If it's a negative one, I should show him walking backwards. So that's how he walks. Now we have to set him back to the normal state at some point, or else he'll just keep looking like he's walking forever. Even if you're still holding on to it, if you click and drag and you just, you're no longer dragging but you're still holding on to it, we still want him to stop. We don't want him to just keep walking in space because if you're not moving the slider, the background is not going to move. So what we do is we have this little timer. So whenever the slider variable changes, it's going to call uh, the timer layer. So as you keep sliding the slider and the variable keeps changing, it's constantly uh, showing timer layer. Um, when timer layer completes, after a half a second, it's going to set the guy back to the normal state. Well, if it's constantly uh, showing the timer layer, it's, it's it, as long as it's doing that within a half a second, which a half a second when you're doing this stuff is a lot longer than you tend to think it is, uh, as long as you keep moving that slider, uh, it's never going to get to the end of the timer layer, and it's never going to uh, change the state back to normal. And that's how we keep him from uh, changing back to normal when you don't want him to, and uh, changing him back to normal when you stop moving everything. And this half second, it's just that took some playing around with. It's just basically a balance of how quickly you want him to go back to normal once you stop moving. Uh, the slider. Uh, so I just took a little playing around with, but I think uh, I think I ended up with a good a good uh, balance. Finally, I have this guy walk into the uh, scene right at the beginning, kind of an establishing shot to bring the character uh, into the scene, and uh, that was much quicker uh, and easier than I thought it would be. Uh, I had a gift for this guy walking, uh, so let me turn this layer back on. 
and I'll turn the other one off. If I click on animations, I'll see that I've got a motion path. So I'm, I just move this GIF from here to here in over three seconds. And again, it's, you're playing around with the timing, so you just play around until it looks right. But after uh, three seconds, I uh, felt like a good natural walk movement. Uh, the, the GIF just plays, so, so the animation just occurs while it's moving this uh, element on the stage. Uh, so it was really quick to do, and uh, the, I think the longest thing was just making sure it aligned with the uh, final state here. Um, when it gets to the end, it just goes away, and you're left with the, the guy standing there. So that's how uh, he was animated on at the beginning. There's a number of things I still want to do to this. I want to redo the guy uh, in a number of different ways. I want to play around with the background and foreground elements, different types of scenes. I want to figure out if possible, so I've got these little uh, hot spots, but they're not really hot spots, they're just graphics on the background. I want those to be actual elements uh, that I can like st that I can set states to, so that uh, once he walks over these, I can set that to like a check mark, so you know where you've been. Uh, that's that's a bit difficult to do. I aside from like creating a, a state with sixty little increments for the different slider uh, positions, and um, you know, if you change anything, you'd have to change all those, so I don't think that's the best way. So I'm, I'm figuring that out. But I, So I don't know if it's possible to do that, but I tend not to make decisions uh, before I come up with the idea. So idea first, and then I assume I can do anything until the, the program tends to rule me out. Uh, so anyway, a lot of things I want to do to this, but um, that's, how this, that's how this works, and I hope it was... Uh, some good information, and uh, if uh, you want any additional information, uh, go to elearninglocker.com. Uh, I will keep a uh, blog post there uh, for this and for uh, any updates that uh, I do to this uh, project. Thanks for watching.